Hi, I'm Shelly Smith, and today I'm going to show you how to make some needle felted pumpkins. Now, this is a great project for adults or children over the age of 12 with supervision. I do not recommend needle felting with children under the age of 12 for safety reasons. So with that said, let's get festive and make some pumpkins. Okay, I'm all set up with my materials here. I've got about five grams of my orange wool roving, my felting needle, and a four inch piece of a chenille stem. For the finishing steps, I'm also going to need a sharp pointy embroidery needle, about one yard of embroidery floss. I'm just using some six strand floss here and a pair of scissors. But before we get started, if you've never done needle felting before, let's talk about this tool, the felting needle. So if you look really closely, you can see that there are barbs on this needle. When you insert the needle into the wool and pull it back out, it's helping to tangle up all those fibers, which cause them to bind together tighter and tighter and tighter. So this is a wonderful tool for sculpting wool. And at the same time, it can really hurt. So if you poke yourself with this needle, it is going to hurt going in, but it's going to hurt a lot more coming out. So keep your eyes on the prize here, folks, and be really careful. If you're focused, you'll be just fine. So we're going to start here with our chenille stem, and I'm going to take a bit of my roving, and I'm gonna just start wrapping it around the base. I wanna leave a nice amount at the top of my stem here so that um, I think I might like to make like a cute curled up stem at the top. So I'm gonna just start wrapping this as tightly around as I possibly can without ripping it. If I pull too hard, of course, I'm gonna just rip the roving, but the tighter you can wrap it, the speedier this process will be. So we're trying to make it nice and tight. So I've got some wool on here. I still need to add more, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and just tack this down so that what I've already wrapped doesn't come undone. So I'm just going in and out, and I don't have to go very deep because the working part of my needle is actually just this bottom inch right here. I don't need to go all the way in, just maybe like a quarter or a half inch in. And I'm also trying not to poke my chenille stem um, because I don't want to break my felting needle. So just a little bit of felting and that wrap is already starting to hold. I know it's not perfectly round yet, but that's okay, we're gonna shape it more in a moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap some more wool. And again, I'm going for generally round, but I'm not too worried that it's an awkward shape right now because that will all work out with the felting. So I'm just rolling around and needle felting here. I find it easiest to hold this in my hands while I'm working rather than to place it on the table. So I don't have to worry about accidentally hitting the table, which can break my needle. But I am being very careful that I'm keeping my eyes on the needle so I don't poke myself. This is why we don't want to do this with young children who can easily poke themselves. I can work the top stem all the way around. I'm gonna keep going like this for a few minutes. 
Okay, I've been needle felting my pumpkin for mm, somewhere between seven and 10 minutes here, and it's nice and firm. I think you will find on your first pumpkin that if you wrapped your wool really loosely, you have a lot more work to do to bind those fibers together. So initially wrapping it tight really does help. And we wanna have a pretty firm pumpkin because pumpkins are pretty hard on the outside, right? And with felting, there really is no end point. You can keep going and going and it will get firmer and firmer until it's rock solid, right? Or you can felt just a little bit and it'll hold together, but it'll be pretty fluffy. So it really is up to you. Um, but I like to make mine pretty firm. It makes it seem a little more pumpkin-y. And depending on the felting needle you're using, you may notice um, some little holes that get left in your wool. You can just massage and smooth those out a little bit if they're bothering you, and they should just disappear, just like that. Okay, so now we're going to add some details. Okay, I have an embroidery needle with a sharp point and about one yard of some just basic six strand embroidery thread. You can use any color you like. And I'm going to put a knot in the end of my thread here. This is something we call a swirly twirly knot. It's one of my favorite knots. So it goes like this with my tail towards the eye. I point up to the sky and I wrap three times around. I hold on tight and slide all the way down. So that just gave me a nice little knot at the end of my embroidery thread. And now I'm ready to begin. So I'm going to start from the bottom of my pumpkin and I'm going to go straight up towards the stem. And you may have to sort of wiggle and negotiate a little bit to get your needle through there, but you can do it. I'm pulling straight up. And here's my knot at the bottom. But what I want to do is I want to really secure this. So I'm actually going to go straight back down through the center and I'm gonna to try to come out pretty close to that knot right there. Oops, watch out for my stem. And before I start making my pumpkin lines, I'm going to make sure this is extra secure. So I'm gonna pull my knot out just a little bit and I'm actually going to dive through the six strands here. So let's see if you can see that. I've gone through the six strands just below the knot. This is just going to extra secure it because depending on how firmly you felted, if we don't secure it like this, that knot could pop right through into your felt. So now it's nice and secure. I can pull it really nice and tight and I'm ready to make my pumpkin lines. So I'm going to come back up to the top and I'll go straight down again. Here's my first line and I'm gonna give this a nice tug. So I really want it to pull in like that. So I have that pumpkin feeling. And then I'll go up again, wherever I like to put my next line. And I'll go straight down, trying to come out right in that center on the bottom. And before I pull it tight, I'll make sure I like its placement. I think that looks good and give it a good tug.
Okay, all my pumpkin lines are complete and I'm ready to knot off and secure my thread. So I'm really giving it a good tug here. And then I'm just going to go under one of these nearby threads. So we'll go under the bridge and then I'll stop and go back through the tunnel. I'm gonna do that three times. Under the bridge, slide under that nearby thread, and then stop and go back through the tunnel. I like to do everything in threes to keep the tangle fairies away. Under the bridge and through the tunnel. And now my thread is secure. I can give it a trim. And here's the tail left from my original knot. I'll give that a little snip. And I noticed as I was stitching, I pulled some of this wool, a little bit of a fluffy bit loose. So I'm just gonna tack that back down, no problem. And then for the finishing touch, I think I want to make my pumpkin have a little personality with a curly, a little curly stem here. They have some extra so I could play around with it. Give that a little snip. Well, that's pretty darn cute. Here's my little festive fall pumpkin. And I think I might just make 50 more. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this project. I hope you make tons of festive pumpkins and share them with your whole community. Thanks for watching.